Welcome to Dubsy Bricks for the finale of Building Mandalore in Lego. And here it is, 11 months down the line, over 100,000 pieces. This behemoth of a mock is finally finished. When I first started building this mock, I had intended on taking it to conventions, so I did make it modular. You have a section at the front here, another one at the back, one just there, another one there, and then the two buildings all come apart. However, it has got so heavy that it's not going to go anywhere. I did make it so I could just about get out of the door frames. But as I said, due to the pure weight of the build, it's not going to be going to conventions, unfortunately. Also on the top here, we have the throne room, which is movable as well now this mock as i said over 100,000 pieces it's over six feet tall it is on a very small or a very low table should i say which is about 40 centimeters so the actual mock itself is probably about five and a half foot tall and at the top on the right hand side there we've got a custom comric class 3 starfighter as well without further ado let's take you through all of the details on the mock and here we have the first lower section of this Mandalore mock. And it's a scene from the Mandalorian and it's the great forge in the mines of Mandalore. And I'm really pleased with how this came out. And I think with the actual forges lit up, it really does bring the mock to life. Now this section took me quite a while to get just how I wanted it. Originally I had this entire wall here as rock work. However, after re-watching the Mandalorian, I realised there were some walls or patterns on. So I had to strip it back and then start again. And it took a while to get the really thin line on the walls. But using the snot technique, I think it came out really well. And at the top, the rock work is using ball joints. So it can go it slants and slopes in all different directions. Just again, to keep the rock work as different as possible from other parts of the build. And previous builds that I've actually done. But yeah, there it is, the Mines of Mandalore. There is a third forge just behind the centre pillar there, as well as a doorway. However, the width of the centre pillar there does hide it. But you can just about make out the slopes there of the doorway behind. But the doorway style is the same as what I've got in the Living Waters, which is the next part of the mock. And next up is the Living Waters of Mandalore. And this is the scene from the Mandalorian episode where Mando tries to redeem himself following the removal of his helmet. He's about to take a step too far off the cliff that he's unaware of below his feet and fall deep into the waters. And they have Bo-Katan stood behind him keeping watch. And the rock work again, I've tried to make it as different as possible from other parts of the Mandalore build. But yeah, all in all, really pleased with how this part of the build came out and possibly one of my favourite sections of the whole build. And here we have another section of the Mines of Mandalore. And this part of the mock changed very late on in the build series. Originally I had it so that Grogu was going to be escaping through the tunnel at the back of the build, following Mando being captured by the spider tank. However, after Lego introduced the ambush and Mandalore battle packs, just had to add those minifigures to the build. So I did away with Grogu and introduced these figures instead. And I think it was the right decision. I think the Imperial Commandos look so cool. I love the helmet mould that they've released for this figure. I would certainly think that the pops of colour with the white of the Imperial Commandos and the blue of the Mandalorians certainly bring this section of the mock to life a lot more than Grogu would have done. And this is the final part of the Mines of Mandalore and this again changed very late on in the build series. Originally I had it so that you had Mando captured by the spider tank. He was in the cage and the spider tank was stood behind him. However, everything was dark bluish grey. The floor, the rock work, and also the spider tank itself. So when they released the set which had the Praetorian Guards attacking Paz Vizsla, I just had to introduce them to the mock. And I'm so glad that I did. The red really does stand out and bring this to life. It's just a shame that Lego didn't add the third Praetorian Guard to the Lego set to make it screen accurate. However, once you get the advent calendar at the end of the year, we'll have that third figure to be able to make this all complete. And here we have the access port that takes you to the lower cities of Mandalore and the sewage tunnels. And again, this was quite a challenge trying to get this as circular as possible and capture as many details as possible that you saw in the Clone Wars. So you have the lift shaft that takes you all the way down to the Undercity. And on the left hand side, we have the first sewage tunnel. And then there's another one on the right hand side. Now, these two tunnels don't actually lead anywhere. I put black walls behind them. Originally, I wanted it so that all the tunnels were as close to the front of the mock as possible. However, where this is a complete circle, I needed to push that tunnel that little bit further back than ideally I would like to have had. So that's why I've blocked it off to enable me to bring all the other tunnels to the front of the build. 
And here we have the tunnels of Mandalore, the sewage tunnels that lead from the access port. And they're going to take us on to the room where Captain Bourne has met his demise. And there he lies on the floor. So Katanu, she's come face to face with Darth Maul for the very first time. And in the back there, we've got a couple of the Maul Mandalorians stood, pointing the rifles down at Ahsoka. And on the floor, another Mandalorian. He's already been shot in the back by Captain Rex and the 332nd. With this entire Mandalore build on the external side of things, it is my own creation. I've used concept art to get ideas of how I wanted it to look, but I've tried to keep the Mandalore style as much as possible in each of the builds. Now on this left-hand building here, I wanted to make this large enough that you could believe that there was a full interior inside it, whether it's offices, apartments, or any other room that you might find within Mandalore. It meant I did have a lot of space at the back of the mop, which I wanted to fill up. So I've added some rooms that you see in the Clone Wars. And at the very bottom here, you've got the prison cell area. Now with this area, I wanted to get it looking as close as possible to what you see in the episode. And I found that using the window frames just along here as the barrier, worked out the best option as opposed to trying to do something brick built and there are a couple of lights in there lighting up and at the side here we've got the elevator shaft and there we have Gar Saxon and Bo-Katan having their battle just before the lift comes down and almost crushes her and again we've got a couple of clones just coming down in the lift unaware of what's going on below them above that we've got a walkway that's going around the main building with four of the Mandalorians just run around the corner following a clone trooper. Just above that, we've got Ahsoka Tanu and Darth Maul having their final battle before she disarms him and takes him into custody. And this would have been taking place above the city of Mandalore, so this is totally out of place location wise. However, I had this big space available and I thought it'd be quite nice to have that iconic scene in there. And then at the very top, we have got the throne room itself. Now, the throne room took ages to get right. And I wanted to get as much detail as possible on the window side of it and make the window frames as thin as possible. Filling in all of the glass elements on there was quite the challenge. I'm really happy with the end result. It would have been nice to have had a lot more space to build the throne room. I think this is about a quarter of the size of what it needs to be. The roof is not at all accurate. That should be sloped with glass elements. However, because of the way I built this, I've just had to go for the flat roof. But I have included the lights in the right shape that you see in the Clone Wars. But this throne room was great fun to build and it is a modular build so it does come off easily it's just on a couple of tiles on the very top of it so i can take that off and keep this long after i take a mandalore apart should i wish to do so outside the palace here we have gar saxon him and a couple of his troops they've already started the battle with the mandalorians a couple of soldiers they're already down and this leads to the bridge now over the bridge you go and then you get to the main landing platform of mandalore now on top of here we have our class 3 comic starfighter with this mandalorian starfighter originally i had it so that the wings rotated however due to the sheer size and weight of the wings the mechanism inside the fuselage was all twisting and it just didn't work properly the other problem you have with having rotating wings, when it's in flight mode, it looks really good. You've got the tile effect on the top. However, when the wings are then put into the landing position, as it's in at the moment, all you can see are the anti-studs on the bottom of the wing. Now, in the real version of this Starfighter, the wings are the same on both the front and the back. So what I decided to do was make the wings removable. That way, I can have the tile effect facing forward on both landing and flight modes so all you need to do remove the wings swap them over put it into the alternate position and there you have it tiles facing forward or upwards and here you have the starfighter in its flight mode so as mentioned i removed the wings put them on the opposite side so it's kept the tile effect on the top and it does have such a nice look to it with this vehicle, it's not quite too minifig scale. The cockpit section only holds one minifigure as opposed to the three that it should do. It would be nice one day to try and recreate this vehicle in minifig scale so you can fit all three people in the cockpit, but also have it so you can deploy troops from the rear of the vehicle on the underside. 
With this mark, I didn't want to add too many vehicles to the build, as I do feel that when you start adding gunships or ATTEs, you can make the mock feel a lot smaller than it actually is. If you've just got the minifigures on there, the mock can look a lot bigger. So one thing I did want to do is keep the vehicles to a minimum, but I did want to add a couple more. So I've added some of these little mini speeders in here. One has been destroyed. And these are based off of the speeders that you see in the Mandalorian battle packs. However, I have tried to shrink them down in size, especially the rear of the vehicle. This Mandalorian speeder again was based off of the Lego set and I've tried to shrink it in size and I managed to get most of the angles in there. It's not perfect but it's a lot better having the vehicle this size than the actual main one that they brought out. The actual Lego set took up the majority of this landing pad and again as I mentioned it would have made the mock seem smaller than it actually is. So again glad that I went down that route of making them custom and making them a lot smaller in size. With this Mandalor mock being my own creation and not actually based on any specific location within Mandalore City I want to try and make it as Mandalorian like as possible so I have tried to include structures that you do see in the Clone Wars these pillars that you see at the front here those are seen at landing pads around Mandalore and the two buildings here are generators again that you see in the main square obviously this circle here is where we see Ahsoka, Captain Rex and Vaughn go down to try and chase after Gar Saxon and Darth Maul and in the centre of the build here, we have the floating building. And with this building, it is just kept on purely by these two corridors here. Now, the corridors, they are hollow, so there are walkways within there. And it's just some Technic beams going across the bottom there. So that's all that's holding this structure up. There's no support underneath it, no trans clear bricks. And it's, it's quite a heavy structure that. And at the bottom here, we've got a scene from episode 16 of season five, The Lawless. And there is Obi-Wan Kenobi. He's been disguised as a Mandalorian and Sabine's just been killed and Bo-Katan is just rescuing him from Darth Maul's clutches. At the bottom of the left hand building here we have got the doorway which leads out and then there's a corridor which goes through to the courtyard. As you go up there's a Mandalorian symbol above and then there's a couple of rooms above it. Now this panel here does remove to reveal that there's a droid and a Mandalorian just working away at a computer. And again on the top here we can remove the panel and we've got a couple of droids C-3PO, R2-D2 and the good old gonk droid on the top room there. And below, we've got a Mandalorian and a clone trooper just looking at a hologram of the battle that's going on at Mandalore. On the floating building, once again, the panel comes off at the front and inside here, just got a couple of generators going on, an office, and then again at the top, another generator of some description. On the right-hand building here, if we remove the panel once again, this one we've got a medical center at the very bottom. And as you can see, we've got a clone trooper lying on the bed there. He's already had his forehead bandaged as he's been injured. His helmet and gun and jetpack to the side there. And there's a medical droid just about to assist him. And there's a back to tank over on the right hand side for somebody should they have any ser more serious injuries. Next level up, we've got Darth Maul. He's been captured, encased, and the two Mandalorians are there waiting to transport him off to the landing platform. And a clone trooper is just coming on to tell him it's time to go. And at the, at the very top here, we've got a faction of Mandalorians and they're just discussing what they should be doing, whether or not to join the battle or not. And just a little rest area at the side. The speeder has been blasted away by one of Darth Maul's troops and the clone trooper, he's been thrown away as has the Mandalorian just there. Now the doorway behind there, that is operational and there is a cog on the side here. So when you turn the lever, the door will go up and down. And when you turn the cog, the door goes up and there is Obi-Wan Kenobi getting ready to join the battle as he does in the episode, The Lawless. Now this corridor here, it took an absolute age to get finished. This corridor has to be one of the most satisfying parts of the build. Trying to get all of the details and lines in here as accurate as possible was quite the challenge. The walls, they go up, they go in, then come back out again was one part. And I've used several different techniques using hinge pieces and ball joints just to get it all to stay in place. And again, you've got the snot technique used on the walls, just trying to get the lines as accurate as possible to the source material. These sections here, they're not 100% accurate to the source material. However, I've got them as close as I could using the techniques I was using and really pleased with the end result of it. 
the door frames again i've tried to capture the shape that you get in there i've just added a couple of little crates in there just for a little bit extra and having the functioning door down this end again is a nice feature to add to the mock really am pleased with how this mock has come out the vision that i originally came up with i feel like i've, I've managed to capture that with the brick so really pleased with that side of things if i were to build it again i would do a few things differently such as a throne room i'd leave a lot more room for that to be built so i could have it the size it needs to be to capture all of the details of all of the windows on there with the Mandalorian Starfighter, again, really happy with how that's come out. And I'm glad I changed the design of the wing mounts on there to go from rotating to removable. So I can just put it in each position should I wish to do so. It would be nice one day to build this craft. So it's mini fig scale. So at the back of the vehicle, you've got a section where the troops can be deployed from the back of the build. But all in all, I'm really happy with the decisions I've made with making this mock. I'm glad I did include some scenes from The Mandalorian down the very bottom there. It was great fun adding the death of Paz Vizsla in there and also the Great Forge as well. But yeah, there it is, Mandalore built in Lego. I really hope you've enjoyed the build series over the last 11 months and really do appreciate all those people that have followed the journey throughout it. If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future content on the channel. And if you know anybody else you think would be interested in building Mandalore or building Star Wars Lego marks or building Gotham City, if you could share the channel with them, it'd be much appreciated. And I have already started planning my next build series and the announcement for that will be very soon. So stay tuned to find out what it's going to be. Thanks for popping on by and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.